Yes, ma'am. Ready to go? Yeah. All right, good. Welcome to the uh, May 28, 2015 meeting of the Sherburne Board of Selectmen. And we will, uh, Irene, would you, uh, would you be willing to read our agenda for us? Thank you. On the agenda tonight, we have uh, public comment, <coughs> and we also have appointments. Registrar uh, Carol Rubenstein, Democrat, trying to expire April 1st, 2018. We have a reserve fund transfer request for um, the c and department. We also have routine business with staff reports. Um, Diane, the assistant town administrator, and myself have an update on FEMA. We met with them this week. We have some opening reports, the meeting calendar review, setting our next meeting, and we also have a consideration of the town administrator's payroll warrant for this evening. We do have a request to amend the agenda by adding a one-day liquor license for approval. So moved to amend the agenda. Yeah, it's fine. That's a, that's a request which oh, I was not aware of and did not reasonably anticipate oh, 48 yeah. hours ago, so it's eligible for an amendment. We have a second on that amendment. So, okay, uh, any further discussion? All in favor of amending the agenda to add that item. Thank you. And we can add that since I know uh, somebody's here for that item. We can add it right after <coughs> public comment, if that's okay. Sorry. No. Frank Hall should be coming in today. Oh, yes. All you were saying is Frank Hall. Okay, perfect. Um, so, Karen, uh, you're next up. Karen Jewell has public comment. She's our uh, COA director. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> I'm here to advise the Board of Selectmen as well as the citizens of Sherburne that the Council on Aging, through working with the Friends of the Sherman Council on Aging, was recently awarded a $10,000 grant from the Massachusetts Lifespan Coalition. And with this funding, we are going to be instituting a Sherman Old Boys Club. Um, this is going to be an opportunity for um, senior men who are facing health challenges to get together, uh, have some um, Opportunity. We're going to have an exercise component. We're going to have Tai Chi first, and then there's going to be some conversations. There's going to be um, some discussions, some lectures. This is going to be a program which is going to be um, run by men. Tom Hunt is going to be taking the lead on this, and he will be um, working with other male volunteers to run this program. We're going to be starting in June and running twice a month on Mondays. So it's going to start at 8.30 in the morning and finish up around 11 to 11.30 and make a little longer as we get some momentum building. And it's going to be twice a month. The grant starts in June and will end in February. If it is successful, then I will be looking for additional funding, um, either through the Friends or through um, the town, or maybe a combination of both, or maybe through additional grant funding. It will depend on the program, but we're very excited. We are looking for um, men to participate. We are also looking for men to volunteer. We're just asking um, one day in this um, nine-month period to come and um, talk about your travels, talk about your hobbies, talk about your interests, whether whatever's of interest to you, I'm sure will be a good conversational topic. Um, and it doesn't have to be long, but it's just an opportunity for men to get together. So that's the program. Um, the friends are accepting the funds from the funding agent because it had to be a 501c3 organization. So that's that. And I also would like to put a plug in for our breakfast with the selectmen, which will be next Friday morning at 8.30. And um, selectman Yon will be joining us, and he'll be meeting the group for the first time. So that'll be Friday the 5th of June, in this very room, 8.30, come hungry, we have always coffee and uh, some light breakfast. You don't get any chance to eat, though. You just, no. You're talking and answering questions the whole time. I, that, that's what, I see, <laughs> sorry, I can't answer. That's right. Yeah, it's, think, a, it's good training. I think those missing will know where to find it. Exactly. Great. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. Good. Um, so Congratulations. Now, Thank you. All done. Excellent. Um, so now we have the uh, item that was added to the agenda, which is a one-day special touring license for the Sherman Community Center annual meeting reception on June 8th, and we have a representative uh, from the from the group. You, you want to just explain what the purpose of the license is? Yeah, sure. Thanks.
Um, we're requesting a quarry license for our annual meeting. The Sherbrooke Community Center invites everyone to attend the annual meeting, but only members can vote. Um, we usually uh, have at least 30 people that do attend. We have a reception before the annual meeting, which is just heavy hors d'oeuvres and beverages, and then, then we go and have the annual meeting, which recaps the previous year, year's business, and we vote for the new board of directors. Yes. First, I move approval, and secondly, I comment that this is an annual event that's been going on for 30 years or something like that. And there's never been a problem, and the efforts of the group is well appreciated for all you do for the community center. Keep that going. And this this is an event I attended last year to collect the annual rent from the show. <laughs> yes, and we should invite you. They pay a one dollar fee. So is there anyone on the board who would like to attend and uh, be the bad man for the, the town's one dollar rent at this uh, at this event? It's a nice event. There's um, there's hors d'oeuvres. There's a, a bunch of people, and uh, it's over pretty quickly, right? It's an hour, an hour and a half, something like that. So if anyone wants to do that, they can either volunteer now or volunteer later. Um, <laughs> otherwise, they'll mail they'll mail us we'll the mail dollars. Mail. So. Chance to be a bag man. It's hard to pass out. Yeah. <laughs> so you do it? Yeah. I think I'm just making sure. Yeah, that's fine. Great. Yeah, we're we're proud about it. Just <coughs> remember to bring that dollar. Oh, yeah. 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 Town offices. So, so um, do we have a motion for this uh, to approve this license. Yes. Do we have a second, second on that? And do we have any questions or comments? Anybody want to talk about this license? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Right. Good to go. There's only three lines on this license, Diane, for the city. That's right. There's only we only need two actually. You understand? So just like the old days. <coughs> Um, next, we have uh, Carol. Are you are you making the request on Carol Rubenstein for the registrar? Is that something you need to address, or no, not okay. at all. Uh, I was here to support the community center um, request. Oh, great, good, thank you. Well, can I move to appoint yeah. uh, Carol Rubenstein as the registrar with the term to expire April 3, 2018? <laughs> Okay, we have a second on that. Second? Okay. Any discussion of this? This is kind of a ministerial act here. Um, okay, good. Okay. okay, all in favor? Aye. So Carol is appointed. Um, Diane, you'll, you'll get a letter or something out to her, unless that's something Carol does. I don't know who can, and she is in charge of lettering the registers. Um, okay. Well, we're way ahead of schedule, so this is good. Um, and it is here. Um, we do have a request now next for a reserve fund transfer uh, that uh, Irene Larrabee will present. Um, and it's a request to fund a transfer of $10,000 to CMD uh, for the purpose of funding a road improvement plan. Ed and Irene. To introduce the um, item, uh, this is something that actually came out of uh, a meeting last week uh, upon reflection of the Chapter 90 road selection. Uh, David Williams and I met to discuss uh, making sure that we had a road improvement plan for the town of Sherburn. And if we didn't have a current one, then we would need to update one. That way, it's um, by having this type of road improvement plan, we start to maintain our infrastructure. Roads are one of the biggest expenses for the town. This develops a plan that over the next three to five years, we can prioritize our roads where funding needs to be. And it also says it's in the capital plan program, so we know for at least the next five years what we need to do for our roads. And the third item is for Chapter 90 funds. If additional funds became available during the year and we have a shovel-ready project, we already have this plan outlined on what we need in an estimated cost. So this is something that David and I discussed with Ed and brought forward as a reserve fund transfer request. And the reason for a reserve fund transfer request is um, twofold. One is we're going to go into our capital improvement process in August. This will allow us two months to complete the plan. And the second item is we're in a unique situation that we still have 
$122,000 left in our reserve fund for fiscal year 2015. Uh, since we brought the proposal forward, Ed has obtained two quotes um, that he can speak to, and we just received them perhaps an hour before the meeting tonight. Yeah. Are those written quotes or just verbals? I have two, two, two written quotes. Uh, first written quote is from Faye, Spotford, and Thorndike. Um, they're the current engineers that we've utilized on the transfer station um, drainage design, and also we've utilized them. Uh, or um, yeah. we've also utilized them for uh, a number of projects out Farm Pond. Uh, they're a great group to work with. Their proposal came in at $19,950. Um, what this includes is a number of meetings. <coughs> most importantly is to go out into the field. They anticipate about a month and a half worth of uh, time in the field. Uh, surveying the roads, walking them, documenting um, the con road conditions, and then inputting this into uh, their system. <coughs> but ultimately, the data that they input is readily exportable into either a database, Excel, and we will have control over the data. Um, they also will be producing a uh, yearly report, um, which will outline the priorities and um, it'll give you a good overview of our infrastructure and where we're at. Going forward, their cost is going to be $6,000 per year in order to keep the database updated. And that's one of the most important things with a roadway management um, program is keeping the data fresh and current. Um, so there is a cost going forward. Um, what type of data is that? Where was the source? What they'll be doing is uh, going through, observing um, the different types of cracking. Is it a, um, is it a surface crack? Is it a um, uh, delamination? Uh, there's another type of crack we refer to as an alligator crack, uh, which is a um, which is reflective cracking. They'll indicate all this stuff. They'll also uh, take into account um, in recommendations for surface treatments, whether it be a chip seal or crack seal. Uh, whether it's a grind and a pave. Uh, once we have all this data, also is I'll be able to develop readily is a uh, roadway estimate. So you can look at what roadways you want to address and I can zip off estimates as to uh, repair costs. And therefore, falling into our capital plan, um, you get a good projection of uh, funds in order to fund roadways. So it, it, did they do anything with uh traffic data or usage data for these roads so we have a way to prioritize by my second quote okay. came in at 105,000 um, this quote takes into account traffic usage studies counts um, pavement depths um, and it's a lot more intensive um, looking them both over and getting the ball rolling um, I really like the uh, FST's pr proposal, and um, who's the vendor? Um, it's it's Fay Spofford on the other mic. No, the second vendor. Oh, the second vendor is uh, Green International. Um, I got two <coughs> refusals from other uh, vendors, and um, I picked up a couple names, which I called today to obtain a third quote. So, so it, if they're not going to do, if the Fay Spofford one does not do. The traffic count data, which is fine, and I think we know what the busiest road is in, in town, but, but wouldn't there still be a dimension of this prioritization that took account of how busy the roads were? It could. Um, I don't think the, um, I think the overall condition report is really what we're after here, and um, we also have the police um, traffic counter trailer. And we can also put that out there to get uh, chirping. Um, and I know um, Lieutenant Bento has a number of different uh, roadways that he's put out. And we can get peak times and counts and things like that. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not even thinking about something that, that detailed. I, I would think that, you know, you, you probably know this, and, and probably most people who've been in town for a while know this, but we could divide the roads in town into thirds or four categories or something like that, and you, and you know which ones are the most used, which ones are the least used, and which ones are someplace in the middle, and then we can figure out how to allocate money where it's going to do the most good. Yeah. And we don't have enough to fix everything. 
And that's why I look at the FST proposal and I say that this is our best bang for the buck. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, let's open to the board for questions. Yeah. At our last meeting, uh, after you left, I had um, presented to the board this idea of a municipal compact, which uh, has as one of its features providing to a town that signs up a pavement management plan. Um, there would be a $5,000 bonus paid to the town for signing, and then they would cover the cost of consultants. And the contract that the sign would be we would actually use the plan going forward. And at the end of the meeting, I was asked to turn that over to the town administrator. I know you weren't there for that, but I'm, I'm wondering why not use state money as opposed to local dollars? And they're talking about a payment management program whereas you're talking about a road improvement plan. Do you know the difference between the two? This would be a pavement management program. Um, David did not speak to me at all uh, regarding the funding, um, so I'm not aware of that. Um, if there is an alternative funding, I'm all for it. Uh, but this is a roadway management program. This is the uh, raw data, a pavement um, index being developed and a um, plate inventory of our roadways. Well, the lieutenant governor has been pushing the compacts, and they actually mentioned uh, Faye Spofford as, as one of their vendors <coughs> that they use for this, uh, for the pavement management program. So I'm, I'm wondering if we're in a hurry, so we don't, is that the problem? Exactly. What we're looking for is to have the study complete by the end of August, because we go right into our capital improvements program. Um, we can explore the compact option and submit a request, um, but I, I don't know the timing on that. I don't know if we have it available for this year or if it would be for next year. Meaning the report, the well, finished the report. The guy makes the decision, Sean, the chrome yeah. is that we could turn it around pretty fast. I, I don't know what that means. I, I can also do a call. I met with the president from uh, FST this morning. I can certainly give him a call and uh, see if he's aware of any program like that. And, uh, how do you sign up? Yeah, that was the whole package that was going to be distributed to the board. I don't know if the board members got it. It, it, it. It's just part of my function on the board is to look out for state money. Right. If you have state money, you can spend it. Mm -hmm. So, remind me how the mechanism works, Paul. That there's a five thousand dollars <coughs> call it bonus, yeah, for signing up. and we put that towards our cost. No, oh, that's free. That's free. And then. And how did, let's say, where did this 20000 what part cover? They provide the consultant. We don't have to pay for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But conceivably, Fake Spotter could be a consultant on that program. Mm -hmm. That's what they, they had mentioned uh -huh. uh, as one of their consultants. And, and we don't control the scope of this study. At that point, it becomes whatever study the state says is the right study for us. Right. Yeah, what they do is the best practice, I assume. Mm -hmm. Best practice. Yeah. Yeah. Which is probably one I, I don't know the answer to how much control we have on it. But they are trying to, they were saying that a lot of communities don't have pavement management programs. They think that your community should have a pavement management program. That's the word they use was pavement management as opposed to road improvement. So they, they had different vocabulary. In, in my quote. I'm engineer, so I defer to the engineers. But they were saying, you need this payment management plan. Every community, yeah. they were saying, they want to have this because it makes the dollars go faster. Than if, you if you spend money wisely in the beginning, this was from the, the article that Mark said, if you spend money wisely in the beginning, you get more bang for your buck. But in order to figure out where to do that, you need these programs. And coincidentally, the, um, the article that Mark emailed out was um, written about um, Mr. Reed. Um, he's mentioned in the article as the uh, uh, contributor of all the data. Okay. 
Um, so he, he, the article was about him. I just handed Sean a uh, sample report, and that's, that would be a yearly report that we would be provided with, uh, which outlines um, statistical data of where the roads are, um, improvements made, um, dollars that are going to require for funding. So they've got a whole product set up for this? Yes. Yep. Oh, yeah, we'll just go down the road show if you got anything. Uh, All right. What's up? You go, I was just going to run down the, the road. Go ahead. Yeah, do you have anything on this mark? Or? Um, yeah. The deferred oh, the deferred oh, the 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 well, my first comment was going to be, <clears throat> huh. we've, we've rushed into something that maybe it very well be the right thing to do, but we've talked about it in one meeting. We're now talking about it. There's still some question of whether we need to even pay for it. Uh, and and I'm, I think I'm fully for it. I, I'm not sure there's such a rush that a week's going to make a difference. I mean, we still have last year's chapter 90 money we're talking about. Uh, it's high, I think it's highly unlikely we have stuff back to us in August, even if they say that. Uh, everybody's busy right now, everyone's unloading money. I think there's projects that we don't really need the data and know that Maple Street's a disaster and we probably should commit to that. Uh, and, and ease up some of maybe we don't want to spend every dollar of chapter ninety yet until we get their opinions. And I know Ed was gonna probably make the point that one of the first things he might ask them to do is reconfirm what we're gonna do. I don't know that we need that on Maple Street, which is like two thirds of our money. Uh, I think we should commit to doing it and see if we can borrow money in advance of getting it. At least unleash it to go after that. It's a big project. And ease up some of the pressure on getting this done. Um, we're, not, we're obviously not going to vote on doing a transfer today. You're talking about borrowing money, Sean, on Maple Street for Maple Street? I thought we had that in the budget. That we voted last week. Well, we always. There was a discussion of whether if we. We don't have enough Chapter 90 money that's released yet from the state. That's released yet, but gotcha. Okay. But we both time that we can borrow the anticipation. So the question is, can we do that for the 300 and I forget what it is. We got a phone call in to uh, Linda Chapter 90 to um, confirm or deny whether or not we can actually do that. Um, my only worry is borrowing money against Chapter 90 and then have it not being signed in July. Um, they've done that a couple of years in a row where we've been. Um, told we were going to be getting 350 then we only received 200 um, In this case here, I think we have the bulk of uh, Maple Street, um, and we should be able to cover at least that project, so I think we're safe. Um, that would be my main concern. Just a, a word on, on my, the uh, 2015 fiscal year money is all committed, and it's, it's there. And that runs to June 30th, and that, that includes 127,000 in January and 253 from last July. There's another 200 that's two, uh, 253,000 available on July 1, which we can borrow in anticipation. And we have a commitment from the government to release another 100 million in next January, fiscal 16, so we will end up with 380,000 for fiscal 16, but 253 is what's committed and will be available July 1. The rest, while he's committed to release it, and it's already been appropriated, and it's already essentially in the state's coffers. He wants to make sure, the governor wants to make sure that there isn't a disaster with weather or other issues <coughs> that came down next January. But between that, the 380 that we have and the 380 that we're getting, that you know, I'm not a mathematician. I don't have enough fingers and toes at that time, but it's still not. So 360,000. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a fair amount of money. Right. So to that point, I think we were all comfortable because we're just, we're not even 100,000 shy right now being able to do Maple Street on the money we've been sitting on from last year. Yeah. And 
I know this conversation, that we talked about traffic, doing Maple Street's going to cost traffic issues. No doubt it should be done during the summer. If we wait till July 1, you're looking at mid-fall, because everyone's going to unleash their projects. If Ed could call sooner rather than later, would have commit to I think we did vote on that last week. But we didn't commit to funding. It's not, it, no one confirmed whether we can borrow for it. It can be borrowed for. It's a great anticipation now. And the only reason that we would borrow is if we didn't have enough funds to pay our existing payroll and accounts payroll. The only thing we haven't confirmed is whether or not we can do the project prior to our seven the full amount in Chapter 90 in order to get their approval. Uh, because um, the approval process goes based on the funds that we have in our Chapter 90 account. Right. So if I submit a project worth 300000 and we only have two seventy five. what I'm trying to get them to agree to is let us borrow, let me go ahead, and then let me submit the project for reimbursement after the funds become available to them. Yeah, and if that doesn't work, can you break the project up so we can do $275,000 worth of it, whatever it is, and figure that by the time July 1 rolls around, you'll be able to catch up on the rest of it? I think you can break Maple Street. What's that? I think you can break Maple Street. It's one big project. Um, well, what, what, I, what I will be doing is getting on the schedule right now for that. Um, I actually have a phone call today from um, Murray that can be doing a grinding. Um, so they're actually trying to schedule it now. Um, and I told them, you know, give me to July 1 unless I confirm earlier. But we, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to be on the schedule right off the bat with these guys. Um, so I don't anticipate this one at the end of the year. I'll try to get it in, in before winter. Um, so this one will be done sooner than later. And from a contract perspective, we can sign to the availability of funds through June 30, start the project, and do it phase one, phase two. From a contract perspective, it doesn't stop the work. That's what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So I guess you're hearing the sentiment as to roll on that as soon as you can. I think that was a good point that the summer is the time to do it. Particularly That's the typical time we prefer to do most of them, get the uh, buses and kids uh, out of the formula. Yeah. Okay. But on, so the, on the transfer of money, I, I just want to reiterate what I had said before. I, I, I'd like to say, and I like that if we have extra money sitting around we're not using it, it's always nice to want to spend it, but if we can spend state money as opposed to our money, then we can have that money to spend on something else. And there's always something that we should spend money on. So if we waited a week for whenever our next meeting is, can't we, um, would that be enough time for David or you or someone to just take a look at that and maybe make a phone call or two and see if it's realistic that they can Definitely. turn something around for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they were very hot to try. Mm -hmm. They basically were coaxing and urging. And they wanted us to sign up. So what's the sense of the board? Because well, can we come yeah, back yeah, yeah. Um, I have to say I'm really not in <coughs> Reserve fund transfer for this. I think that um, uh, it doesn't meet the, the extraordinary or unforeseen test. Um, I also think this is the uh, it rises to the level of something that should go in front of the voters. And if we're going to spend twenty thousand dollars and commit to six thousand dollars a year after that, um, I think they need a, a chance to vote on that. Um, so, you know, I, I, on that principle alone, I would be against doing that. The other question I have is, how would you describe the current state of our, I mean, we must have some kind of a pavement management. Yeah, and, and what I uh, did was I pulled last year's um, uh, listing, and um, basically we're following through with what we um, requested last year. Last year I had uh, Washington Maple. Um, Kendall, I had the chip seals for the old orchard neighborhood and also the Harrington Ridge uh, neighborhoods. Um, and I also have um, Brush Hill and Hunting Lane as another priority. Um, in, the, in the near, in the close background, I also have Lake and Farm. 
But, but when you when you sit down to decide which projects to recommend, what what data do you use to do that? Um, it's based on based, based, based on observations, uh, based on uh, complaints, and the, uh, the roadways that we are addressing uh, problem issues. Um, in my opinion, the uh, the Maple Street and the number of frequency of popples and the way they were popping over there, you're losing the roadway very quickly. Um, Washington Street and Scudder's Hill, uh, we made a number of repairs there. They're not holding. Um, you need to get a, a good solid top coat on that. Um, running down Hunting and, um, and Brush Hill, um, you've got the edges of the roadway you know, caving. Um, it really needs to get another uh, layer on there. It needs to be addressed. And I'm sure there's many other problems. It, that it's, 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 it's basically, I mean, I'm but, using... But my, 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 I guess my point is that somewhere between this 20,000 plus 6,000 a year solution and what we're doing now, there's an interim step that we could do that I think would give everybody an overview of the, the, the state. And if you go to this article, they talk about, well, we didn't you know, sometimes don't have the money, and they do their own first pass evaluation of the town. I mean, which is, which how, many, how many miles of road do we have? 65. 65. So even if you drove it 20 miles an hour, right, you could do it in a day. And, yeah, and between, um, me, between me and my foreman, um, we, uh, we, we cover the town you know, every you know, two, three weeks, you know, pretty much on every road in town. And um, them going through and doing a drive-by and, and knowing the indexes and documented in a database, versus you know, John and myself to kind of note in the back of my head, hey, this one's going to have to be addressed. Uh, we, we've got the road work in our, in our heads. We can certainly come down and give you listings. Um, we're not taking it to the extreme of saying that this one has a pavement index of 0.75 and this one is 0 0.6. But we're at the point of this roadway. And, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't expect that. Um, but I, I think if, you know, if, if, I would, if I were doing this, I think what I would do is you know, write down every, you know, each of our roads, what do you think the condition is? If you want to get really fancy, you might color the map. And I think we all have an idea of the sense of the thing. And, and then we could begin to <coughs> pull out that plan. Um, now, I can certainly send you last year's memo. We have uh, 18 different streets on here um, with recommendations, um, which basically covers <coughs> almost two years of spending. Um, we could further that out into a five-year plan. Um, this one here, as, uh, as Paul pointed out, the roadway management and having it formally done with an engineer and to the degree of uh, reporting that they have is significant in the fact that when you go for funding, something becomes available, you can pull this out and say, here's a professional report. Um, it's not Ed Wagner's index, this is a, an engineer report. Um, is it worth the amount of money? Yes, if you're going to be looking for the funding and for the justification to the voters and for your own um, um, knowledge that this is the official top listing. Um, a road and and I, personally, I'm willing to, to trust your judgment on this. Um, I would just like to see um, some more, some more. Yeah. And in your article, also, you know, your article comprehensive there. planning. Done. And also through and reading the article that you provided there, um, which, which kind of backed up the, the, the chip ceiling of the Harrington Ridge neighborhood, and sometimes that you've got to do a preventive measure, even though the roadway doesn't appear to need it. It's its protection um, and ensuring a uh, longer lifespan. I just wanted to expand on Mark's question about what we've done in the past. Um, have we ever had a formalized pavement management? Or has it been the last one that I could find was done in uh, 1989, and it doesn't appear that you did a full town wide, but you did. It was I think you guys were looking. The town was looking at the time for a million dollars worth of work, and I think they had Lake on there, Washington, uh, North Main Street, South Main Street, and they developed indexes just for a, a small portion of the roadways. Because frankly, but. I agree with Mark. What you've, your knowledge about these, the 65 miles of roads is, um, I, I think we need to defer to it. This clearly is more organized, more scientific. The category, categorize it in terms of priorities. 
color map in the back. Um, I'm not sure there's enough. I, I, I suspect it may be a grant application. I'm not sure that there's value added otherwise for the six thousand a year that you're paying for. Yeah, I mean, what we have in front of us now is it's only the um, only the transfer request, and, and I think uh, Paul and others have suggested that before we get to that, we yeah. find out whether there's state money. It sounds like we've got a consensus for everybody to get that answer before we vote on any kind of a transfer. Yes, we can hold this item if you'd like, if that's a consensus of the board, and I'll follow up on the compact I think it is. and get additional information. Definitely hold on. Yeah. Okay. That's where I started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're all there. Um, yeah, and, and just one, you know, one more, th more thing, and, and that would probably just, you know, be in the same drum over and over again. But I, I don't see why in, until we get the major roads in town, the ones that bear the brunt of the traffic, including traffic that crosses through town, as well as collector roads that come out of the, you know, that the different subdivisions feed into, until we get those in good shape, I don't think we should be putting much of our budget towards the neighborhoods. I know there's some crummy roads in some of the neighborhoods, and people have had to, to put up with those, but it, as long as they're passable, um, we, we ought to get our major roads in shape first, and then go to those roads. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's a, it's a valid concern. Um, what, I, what I point to is um, back in 2010, we chip-sealed um, Prospect Street. Mm -hmm. uh, the overall cost of it was like something like $12,000, $13,000. Um, in doing so, I haven't had to touch that street to date. Um, so it, it's a, um, the chip ceiling is a preventive measure. The 127 that you're going to bang out here in Rachel, you know, all of those roadways, it's a very good bang for the buck. And what I'm trying to do is ensure that I don't have to look at those roadways for another six, seven years, given the usage. And by sealing them up, keeping the water out, giving them a, uh, a better wear course there. Um, what I'm trying to do is ensure I don't have to spend any money. The other thing is you really don't want them to fall apart to the point where I can no longer just chip seal them. I now have to do a full depth and tear the whole roadway up. Um, yeah, that's so the balancing act. I, I, I get that's, that. That's but, but, but we've got a lot of road problems in town, and, and to me, putting more money into a longer stretch of Washington Street, for example, or Kendall, or wherever, you know, wherever we can use that money, Unless and until you, you're telling me we're at the point where it's got to absolutely be done, the chip seal's got to be done this year, or else we're into the, the full repair. I'd still rather see the, the major roads. We don't have to make that decision tonight, but that's just, I'm telling you where I'm coming from on that. And that's why I think any kind of system, whether we get it from the state or otherwise, there still needs to be a dimension of that which talks about which of the roads in town that see the most use and serve the most people and, uh, you know, benefit the most people. Yep, and, um, and that's what I try to do. I, I look at the overall everything in town, and um, it, it's it's my job to make a recommendation to you. Um, Can I throw up on this one? Yeah. Uh, I agree with most of it. Uh, but as I talked to Ed earlier, uh, in, in reviewing the needs of that, the, and this is why I didn't, I, I'm not all that eager to rush into it today. Yeah. Uh, Take I had was we, we kind of know what we need to do. We can, we could discuss those neighborhoods a couple more times. We know Maple Street's going to fall apart. Um, I see the value in that if, in fact, we're going to start trying to fund outside the chapter 90 and go to the voters with, we need to borrow money to do this capital project. Whether we're going to do it a hundred thousand a clip every you know for the next five years, or we're going to do a huge a big project which was almost a million, the two and a half override we did in the nineties. That would be valuable to have um, because it's, it won't be our opinion as the board that our next president. Well, it won't just be Ed's. It would be an engineers, and it would be. I would think it would be twenty thousand dollars well spent. At uh, that point, especially when we're actually making cash, cash up, it's not just the check. And I and I think we need to get there. The case to be made, unless in fact the state's going to keep supplementing more chapter ninety. Maybe yeah. can, can I can I make a call on that? Sure. In addition to, to trying to increase Chapter 90 every year, I have been making the case on the state level that a road like Washington Street, we, we have two state roads in town, state numbered routes in town, we have 27 and we have 16. 
And one fifteen. And one fifteen. Yeah, thank you. What you live on? Which is the right side. <laughs> where is the? Uh, <laughs> yeah, where is that? <laughs> the uh, I haven't talked to them about one fifteen, but I, I have talked to them about twenty seven and sixteen, and and these are roads that while they serve Sherburne, they truly serve the entire region. And therefore, the upkeep of those roads is unfairly burdening Sherburne. So I've been making the case with Ed's help put together a little brochure that we have that I've been peddling down all over the place. And I, I, I haven't had time, but I'm supposed to set up a meeting with Ed and I and with Mastock to talk about that road and what can be done with that road. We're trying to walk a fine line where we don't want to accept federal big road road standards where they have to have sidewalks and bike paths and 60, 60 foot uh, right of ways and two or three lanes in each direction and all of that. So that's that's the usual fight. But in in preliminary discussions, they, they're like nodding at the notion that this is a rural world, this is a rural community. The character of the community, we want, we want to stay the same. So we want a, a $500,000 investment by the state, not a $5 million investment. Because they started off with the assumption you know, where we're going to find the $5 million to do Washington Street in town. I'm like, oh my God, we don't want the $5 million. <laughs> Don't even talk about it. We're looking for just an overlay. So we, we, we are going to set up a meeting. Well, they're waiting for me to get back to them on the day. We have to coordinate with it. It just to kind of too many other things to do. But there is an effort underway to get additional funding that comes through the, the uh, state funding, no local funding, no local funding match, to deal with the state routes. That doesn't deal with Coolidge Street. But if we can get funding for the numbered groups, I think there's an argument to be made that Cool Street is truly a very important connector. If, if you can get those numbered groups, that, that takes a huge burden off of our uh, plate. Okay. And then later on, we're going to throw the stuff on. <coughs> so have we exhausted the road topic for this meeting? <coughs> I think so. Okay, good. Um, the next thing we've got to do then is. Um, Staff reports, town administrator report. You've got a report on FEMA? Yes, I mean, and I met with uh, John Lynn, who's a project specialist with FEMA. We really required um, FEMA public assistance program for the snow assistance reimbursement and for emergency protective measures. We have all of our paperwork together now. We're going to be submitted for a Friday hour period between January 26th and the 28th. Our original estimate at this time is for $55,780. However, it's subject to further review by FEMA. And I just want to let you know that any amounts that we do get will be going into the general fund. And that's the reverse for yes. snow plowing mm -hmm. and things like that. Well, there's a lot of paperwork that needs to be gathered. Uh, well, I, I, I want to commend the fire chief for keeping yeah. good records. Mm -hmm. And I want to commend you all from going. I thought you were at 27 or 28,000. And how you double that, I won't ask. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's truly wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on the uh, staff reports? Uh, Selectman reports? Anybody have any reports? Anything to report? No? No, I'm just, yep. but, you know, I, I followed up on the, uh, the electricity uh, contracting yeah. thing, and um, I talked with my controller. It turns out it's been a good deal for us. We've saved about uh, two and a half cents a kilowatt hour so far, since November to June. Um, so I sent this to you. Follow up. Uh, on that. Let's see. We do work with Yeah, I noticed you had so, suggested that David uh, you try to set up a meeting with them. So that's a good idea. And then I, I don't know what the appropriate point on the agenda to talk about it. But this this uh, report on the water. That seems to be sure. Um, I'm going to say I. Um, the, uh, the water report from C and D. I think uh, we've sent copies of it. Mm -hmm. I saw, but 
You didn't see it? Yeah. No. Oh. I didn't get it either. <laughs> I guess I don't remember who sent it to me. Um, you tested um, you tested high for lead. Yes. You want to throw some some, some light on this? Um, we, the first test that we had done um, prior this was done prior to the Board of Health uh, weighing in with the actual um, testing that they were looking for. Uh, we've since um, got a hold of Whitewater. They're going to be doing a follow up test. Uh, to verify the uh, lead, um, and then it, 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 number one, we want to verify the lead count and, and uh, that it wasn't just a freak anomaly. Number two, if there is, then we're going to have to dig in deeper uh, exactly where it's coming from. Being a brand new building, we've got a plastic tank, um, all updated faucets. I can't, it's got to be, it would have to be something at the well level, and Sean's going to deal with more of the building issues than I have uh, through his years. Okay, so there's more information to come. Yes. But do you have, are you providing, are we providing drinking water, uh, bottled water? We've always, um, the, our water there goes from a, uh, from a well into a holding tank. Uh, my crew has never, um, depending on when the water actually gets cycled, they've never drank the water there. We have bottled water, uh, given the, the taste um, coming out of the holding tank. So um, I do have it posted, it's not potable. Um, but my crew has never drank water. The other one have a special total dissolved minerals. This, the standard is 500 megs per ml. I think when we were at like 84. Is it drinking on our standards, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our sodium is also high. I spoke with Eric Burkett today from Whitewater. And I after talking with him, we're going to have a full comprehensive testing done. The same as what we would do at Woodhaven and Leland Fouch because they drink that water and that's what we want to base our testing on to do a full game of all the VOCs too. So he and is going to um, do the testing next week. So we should have a full report shortly. Was that tested at the tab? That was tested at the kitchen sink. Okay. And, and where is the new full report going to be tested? At the kitchen sink? Or I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what will they they're, do. They're going to, uh, yeah, they'll test a couple different locations. The other thing also is um, our building was never actually signed off in 1995 when we had our well put in. Um, so Ellen indicated that they were looking for us to be compliant uh, with the testing. So we might have to do a test at the wellhead also. How is it possible that it wasn't signed off in 1995? Yeah, somehow it was missed in 1995 and it was also missed again when we went for our occupancy once the building was completed. Let me jump in. Because I'm the one that brought this up. Not a week ago, but a couple months ago. And I, and I, I want to reel back a little because we're, we're asking the CMD director health related questions. Well, and I was we're, asked, asked, we're also having a substantive discussion on something that's right. on the agenda, so we right. should probably... No, and I, and I want to have that discussion, yeah. and I, and I, but I'm dead set against him taking the lead as the CMD director on a series of what could be a health risk. Might be an environmental risk, mm -hmm. we don't know. But the Board of Health didn't sign off on a well that the town drilled. They didn't sign off on a building that the town took occupancy of. And now we've waited. He sent out water tests that weren't the right test because the Board of Health wasn't communicating with them. And I'm, I'm asking that the Board of Health take the lead on this. Well, so, so Diane, one thing we could do is put this on the agenda, maybe the, maybe the same agenda when we talk about the other issue that we got uh, set up with the Board I'm of Health. I'm still waiting for response to see who's coming. But, but, but maybe we put them both on the, on same, the same time. Agenda. Yeah. 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 And in the meantime, Sean, I mean, if you want to be the interface with the Board of Health on this, maybe that's a good idea too. Probably not a good idea. Okay, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> not for you. Okay. That's fine. At least for a week or so. Okay. Uh, and and I, I mean, I, I got to be careful. I mean, I'm on a, a bar, so. Okay. That's a fine line. I was also on the building committee, so I know probably more about the building than anything else. So, Board of Health. Yeah. It would really surprise me if there was lead pictures in the building since it's not even a decade old. Okay. But that's a serious issue. Everything else is brand new. We spent a great deal of money, I'm sure, a couple people remember, about putting that water system and then redoing that water system right. to make sure that it was safe and potable. Yeah. Uh, there'll be a backflow for runners in there. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry. All right. Any other select reports? No?
Um, we have to set up a next meeting. Um, we had last week tentatively set up a June 10th meeting. I think there was a reason we didn't have it Thursday. I can't remember. Yeah, I have a board of medicine. I thought we were going to try and do Wednesday soon. So. No. Um, that's that's certainly fine. I, I, I know you couldn't do it in the fall. Yeah, right? that works for you. All right, so we'll, we'll keep it at June 10th. There's a possibility I won't be there, but uh, you know, carry on. And uh, then we'll, uh, we'll take that. What's that? June 24th was that the June 24th was the next one, yeah. yeah. So it's 6 o'clock both days. Yeah. Well, if they're not going to be there, I'll keep moving to uh, ask the chair to take care of all the items on the agenda. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds excellent. Yeah, so we, we did schedule the time? Yes. We did the last time tentatively. We didn't we didn't okay. formalize it. Is that wrong? Is that what you Sean? Mm -hmm. It's six. Plus. Okay. All right. So we'll keep it at that. Uh, so right now the two firm ones are tentative and the twenty fourth is what we've got set up. Anticipate every other week after Yeah, we'll see what happens, we'll see what happens in, in July and August sometimes the schedule spreads out a little depending on how much we've got going on. It looks like there's a, you know, some of these issues that are on the horizon maybe more frequent games, but I know last year I think three times between July and August all together, something like that. So, okay, good. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Can I... Do oh, you, you want to talk about more items for next? Um, we can, sure. Well, I just... Yeah, yeah. I sure. to ask that I could make a report next time uh, on the playground. At least just to update everyone. I don't, I don't know if it needs to be. This is the new playground? Oh. Just update everyone on the, on the playground rebuild that's going to take place this fall. That would be great. I'll second that. Yeah, good. I'd like to have a report. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, if anything else comes up, anybody uh, just send me to David an email and we'll get it on the agenda. Um, do we have a warrant we need to vote on this time? Yes. 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 The town administrator's payroll. Town administrator payroll, so we have a motion to approve this. Second. Okay. All right. Further discussion? What's the, um, what's the cross out here? What is all this? Oh, we're just approving the town administrator line on this, on this agenda. Okay, fine. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? All right. So we have a motion to adjourn. All right. All in favor? All right. Good. We're adjourned. Thank you.